Esther here from Slow Living. It has been a while. It's been a while since I showed my face on my videos, actually. Since becoming a mum in the last two years, it has been a lot easier for me to just film without having to jump on here and chat. But I do miss it and I think I'll try to show up a little bit more because I enjoy it and it's great to touch base with all of you guys. In this video, I'm going to talk you through how to alter a wedding dress. Um, I have altered a few in my time. I used to sew up wedding dresses actually, custom wedding gowns, but I'm not super, super, super experienced in it. I simply dabbled and had friends of friends who, you know, wanted to have their custom wedding dress made up, so I had to go. I'll try to find some pictures, but I honestly don't know if I have. But anyway, this was a recent alteration because because my sister-in-law got married to my brother um, and I helped her out with her wedding dress. I actually did a few alterations to her dress. I shortened the straps, I took in the side seams and I also took in the back around the zipper and I altered the length as well. So in this video I'm just going to tackle taking in the side seams because I think that's a really common alteration that you might come across for wedding dresses or dresses in general. So hopefully this is super helpful and then I'll bring out a couple more videos that cover the other alterations that I did. As with anything wedding related there seems to be a really high price tag when it comes to altering wedding dresses. And that does come with reason. So for example, you're paying for professionals to alter a wedding gown and you want it to be beautiful, of course. You want it to be perfect and well done. But I'm gonna try and show you in this video how you can do it yourself. Perhaps you've picked up a wedding dress that was on a sample sale, that was a great buy, but it was just too big. Uh, perhaps you've inherited a dress from someone close to you and you wanna wear that, but it doesn't quite fit. Um, maybe you picked one up at a thrift store and you're hoping that you can alter it a bit and sort of make it your own. All those three options are probably a little bit more sustainable in different aspects. As I said, you can also use this to alter you know, pretty much any dress, not just wedding dresses. You can alter tops and dresses in the same way. I'll do my best to talk you through because it can get a little tricky as we go along. Of course, garments differ so much from, you know, what seams, what fabric, what uh, finishes are used. So I'll do my best to talk you through that so that you can get the best outcome possible. Let's get started. The very first step is to analyze your garment. One of the most important things to analyze for wedding dresses is the fabric choice. So for example, is there lace covering the dress because you can't get any more of that lace? Um, you have to be very careful if you can even sew over the lace. If there are beads, that's not something that I would recommend because it's not super beginner friendly. And yet another thing is how many layers of fabric are there because is your sewing machine going to be able to sew through all those layers? Sometimes there's lots of interfacing or fusing, things that create structure within a wedding dress. And you need to be able to sew through all of those layers to create a really nice alteration. That leads me to the next important thing to analyze for your garment, that is construction details. So things like seams, where you can see that two pieces of fabric have been joined together, and things like fastenings, such as zippers and buttons. It makes a lot more sense to work with these things and find ways to alter around them rather than trying to create new places for zippers or moving seams to different places. For example, the dress that I was altering didn't have any darts in the front skirt. You can see that fabric doesn't have any seams there. So instead of trying to create a seam, it made sense to take it in from the side and also from the back where there was a zipper. As another example, the dress had this beautiful lace godet or this lace panel at the back of the skirt. And even though I needed to adjust the length at the front of the skirt, I decided to leave the back because I did not want to have to mess with that lace. Um, instead, I left that and then I worked around it. Next, it's a good idea to sketch out your garment. I use these templates that I purchased from Fashionary. Um, they came in very, very handy and they're beautiful to use. But of course, if you can't afford them or you don't have them, you can use any sort of template that you find online just to sketch out your garment. You don't even need a template if you can't be bothered. You just need to draw the outline of your garment and then make sure that you note down all of those important details that we were analyzing before. I'm drawing in my seams here and also I'm drawing in where the lace is on the dress so that I can just be wary of that and how I'm going to work with it. 
Make sure that you also do a back view, maybe even a side view if there are lots of side details on your garment, um, because there are lots of important things that we need to keep note of there as well. Now I'm going to circle all the things that I need to alter and as you can see it just gives a really clear overview of all the things that I'm going to work on. But like I mentioned in the intro, I'm just going to be focusing on altering the side seam in this video. Next we obviously need to know how much to take our dress in, so we do that by trying the dress on and then pinning it in. I tapered my dress in from that underarm down to the waist seam, so I didn't have to touch the waist seam at all, and I took it in by one inch on each side. So actually a total of four inches because each side had two inches taken in. Now we need to unpick the seams that we're going to alter. So for me, it was this side seam. Most wedding dresses will have a lining, so that means there's actually two layers of fabric that we need to alter. The main and the lining fabric should be mirrored, so whatever we do to the main fabric, we just do the same alteration to the lining. To get access to those seams that we want to alter, we need to get in between the lining and the main fabric. So usually you can go all the way up through the skirt and go up all the way up to the bodice so that you can feel in between those two layers of fabric and you should be able to flip it inside out so that you can see all of those raw edges and all those raw seams that we need to unpick in order to get things started. Once you start unpicking, you will realize that you come across more seams that you actually need to unpick in order to get access to that entire seam that you want to alter. So for example, here, there was some top stitching that was in the way. It was basically holding the lining and the main fabric together. So in order for me to separate the lining and the main fabric, I needed to unpick that top stitching. And then I also needed to unpick that seam. It was this seam here that I had to unpick as well. So we can go back and sew that up after we've taken in the side seam. Just a side note, this tape came off when I unpicked that seam. Um, as I mentioned, wedding gowns have a lot of extra structural little things that go into them. So whatever you unpick, just think that we can put it back in later. This is what it looked like once I had it unpicked. So you can see now I can easily separate the lining and the main fabric. I can get my fingers right in there and now I can access the side seam which I need to alter. We can reference my sketch from before to see how much I need to take it in. And that's essentially the new seam that I'm going to be sewing. I'll use a chalk pencil to basically draw a straight line where I'm going to alter it. That's the inch that I'm taking out from under the armpit and then it tapers down to nothing when I get to the waist. Now, because we've taken in some fabric here, our underarm seam doesn't quite match up anymore because they're different lengths. It's actually this curve here that sits around from the front neck down under the armhole and we can reshape that curve later on. Here you can see my new side seam, which I've sewn over that chalk line. And I'm actually going to snip out or get rid of that extra bulk that's from the old side seam because it's too bulky for my dress and I don't want it to be in there. If you're going to do this, make sure that you've fitted the dress and that you've checked that the sizing is correct before you snip anything away. I've repeated the exact same process to do the side seams on the main fabric as well. So in total, I've sewn four new side seams, a left and right of the main fabric and a left and right of the lining fabric. Use an iron on an appropriate setting to iron it down nice and flat, all four of your new seams. Now I've got my dress inside out and I've got the lining and the main fabrics sitting on top of each other, right sides together. So now I can re-sew that underarm seam. I used my chalk pencil again to sketch in a curve that I thought would work and then I sewed it down and flipped the dress the right way out to check that it would work. I highly recommend doing this each time you sew a seam to double check that what you've sewn is correct. And if it doesn't look quite right, you can always flip it inside out again, unpick what you just sewed and then re-sew it. Once you've re-sewn a seam on one side, do your best to do the exact same on the other side. Now that my underarm seam is re-sewn, I can also put the tape back in that I removed earlier. In case you're wondering, that tape is used in bridal gowns or structured gowns to make sure that it doesn't stretch out over time so that you don't have any gaping around your underarm or around your back. That tape helps to keep it in place. Once you've re-sewn any trims and all of the seams that needed to be sewed back into place, you can flip your dress the right way out and the alteration should be complete. 
make sure that you give it a really good iron or a press. You can use steam, but make sure that you try and test it beforehand to check that your dress or garment can handle steam so that you get a really nice crisp edge. And that's pretty much it. This is the finished product. It fit really beautifully after we did this alteration and we did a couple more alterations. So remember, I'm going to do a few more videos. I'll do one about shortening straps on a wedding dress and another on how to shorten the length of a wedding dress, which you can use, of course, to shorten any skirt or dress. It was really great to finally get this video out. I've had a whole bunch of footage from when I've done little projects in the past couple of years. Uh, let me know in the comments if you had any questions or if you enjoyed the video. Do like this video and subscribe because it supports my channel and it just makes me feel nice that I'm helping people in this way and I really enjoy it. So um, I'd love to hear from you if this was helpful and if you had any suggestions for what I could sew up next, I will note those down. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you in another video soon. Oh, you can also find me on Instagram now. So I've up I haven't really updated it, but jump on there because I will be updating it soon and I'll be bringing out some different content on there because, you know, Insta's fun for different reasons. So jump on there and follow me on that if you haven't already. I'll see you soon. Bye.